Hi folks, welcome back to the tutorial on understanding Agile, a common sense approach. Let us learn about Sprint Zero activities in this video. Assume that you have purchased a new flat and moved in. Now you want to start the furniture and interior decorator work. You are going to meet an executive of interior decorator firm called Scrum Works. I have moved into my 3 BHK. However, I have no bed to sleep. No dining table. I face a lot of inconvenience while cooking in the kitchen. Since there is no kitchen rack, there is no television rack and no DTH for the entertainment. The ceiling is not looking good without POP work. As I understand you are looking for interior work with furniture and POP which will add values like convenience, time saving and beautification. However, the DTH connection will be out of scope since that is not our core business area. Fine. One more thing. I don't want the development noise and hurdle in my day to day life. Alright. We can do the development work at our workshop and then deploy the solution at your home. What is the total time frame you are looking for the completion? Some high priority items will be needed at the earliest. Rest everything should be completed within 3 months. Our highest priority is to satisfy our customers through continuous delivery of valuable products and services. Great! Continuous delivery sounds good. That means I need not to wait for the entire work to be completed before I start using them. Discovery is the initial part of Sprint Zero when following things are discovered. High level objectives of the project, business value gain expected out of the solution, constraints with respect to the implementation, system boundaries are drawn to understand what is within and what is out of the scope for the development, tentative timelines for the releases are decided, quality expectations and critical success factors are set, etc. We commit to develop potentially shippable items at every regular time box interval called iteration or sprints. How do you determine the iteration length? The iteration length selection depends on one or more of the following factors. Number 1. How urgent are the requirements? We keep the interval shorter if the requirements are really urgent. Second, overheads associated with every delivery. For example, transportation cost can be minimized with longer iteration length. Third, availability of the stakeholders to give their feedback. The whole purpose of doing it in iterative manner is to get early feedback. When the house is not yet occupied and the owners can visit the location say only once in a month, then we plan our iterations accordingly. Fourth, frequency of the changes in the requirement. We are open to accept the changes even late in the development. However, the requirements must be frozen only for the ongoing iteration. So if the requirements are changing frequently, then smaller intervals are more suitable. Fifth, length of the project. If the total project is of very short duration, then it does not make sense to keep longer iterations. What do you mean by potentially shippable? A dining table and 4 chairs are total 5 items for us to develop. If we have the table ready but not yet the chairs, then the table is potentially shippable meaning ready to be deployed. We may not ship it alone since it does not make sense. However, your review comments on all such items at the end of every iteration during the demo will help us avoid expectation mismatch after the deployment. You said time boxed interval. What does that mean? The time box means our iteration or sprint will be over when the iteration cycle time is over. The incomplete or in progress items are moved to the next iteration. You said I have the privilege to change my requirements too. We welcome changing requirements. We make customer a part of our team. We begin every iteration with planning meeting where customer and the entire team participate. The development goals for the iteration are frozen during this meeting. What if I want some changes to the delivered items after the deployment? We do understand that it is difficult to imagine everything before the development. You can sure ask for the changes to the delivered articles. However, that will be considered as a new requirement since we would have already delivered by then with your acceptance. Requirements frozen only for one iteration at a time. Still I have flexibility to change my other item. Fair enough. So, how do we proceed? 
We will begin with understanding your requirements in more detail. For that, our cross-functional multi-scale team will have a workshop with you. The resulting list of requirements and deliverables is called product backlog. What do you mean by cross-functional team? When the project is big, we make smaller teams of three to nine members each for better communication and coordination within the team. Every team may have carpenters, electricians, glass workers, trolley makers, POP designer, architects, etc. Such team is called cross-functional, meaning they can take any requirement to the completion independently. And what do you mean by multi-skilled? Are they not specialized in their individual area? The members are expert in their own functional area, but they also understand the technicalities of other work in the release. We train them to become generalized specialist or specialized generalist if you prefer. In this way, they can help each other when needed. This helps us deliver a requirement quicker. Well, I like the idea to be a part of the team. This will give me good insight on the development and opportunity to provide immediate feedback. But I don't understand your technical jargons. Well, that should not be a problem. You need to tell us three things about every requirement. First, the type of user, that is who is the intended end user. Second, the requirement detail, that is what exactly are you looking for. Third, purpose, that is why is it needed. This is called user story format. Also, for every article, you need to tell us the acceptance criteria before we start working on it. We do ensure that we meet the definition of done before we release it. Ah, uh, one more jargon. This guy must be an IT engineer. Recession effect? What exactly do you mean by acceptance criteria and definition of done? Every requirement may have its individual acceptance criteria to be met in order to be considered as complete. For example, a sofa must be of specific dimension and with a specific foam density. This could be your checklist before you accept the deliverable. Got it. But see, I want every wooden article to be made up of thick wood. Should be durable for at least another 10 years and should be safe for children. So no sharp corners. Do I need to mention all this for every individual article? Such a criteria, which is horizontal across all the deliverables, are included under release definition of done. Apart from your criteria, that is business criteria, we add our own internal process checklist. For example, is it reviewed, tested for quality, etc. All this form engineering definition of done. We say a requirement is complete only when the business definition of done and our engineering definition of done are met. Am I supposed to tell you in detail about acceptance criteria for each and every item right in the beginning? Not really for all the items. In depth detail about 20% top priority product backlog items will be enough for us to begin with. For other items, we will need acceptance criteria about three sprints in advance. This will be discussed in a meeting called product backlog grooming or product backlog refinement which will be conducted in every sprint. But will the details about just 20% of the item be enough for you to tell me time and budget estimate? With 20% detailed and 80% less detailed PBIs, we can estimate roughly about the size of requirements using story point estimation technique and can quickly come up with a probable release date. This will be a tentative date, which will be revisited after completion of every iteration as and when we get better clarity. Tentative release date for tentative requirements. I cannot expect exact date with changing requirements. If I ask too much for same cost, quality will suffer. You see, I am an art lover and have some ideas. I have been to Italy and I have some pictures. I want to have those designs in my POP work. Will you be able to do that? We do have POP knowledge, but this type of work is new to us. So the technical risk goes higher. So the effort estimate for such work goes higher even if the size of article is small. For the glass on dressing table, I want ancient Indian design. How about that? Ancient Indian design will be hand carved. It has a lot of complexity involved. So the estimate will be higher since we will have to deploy a senior expert here. 
What is story point estimation? As discussed, we don't estimate based on the size of article alone. It depends on the complexity and the risk too. The story point estimate is a function of these three. What is the unit of estimation? Story point itself is a unit of sizing. We have a very interesting process to estimate where every team member is involved. May I ask why all team members are required for estimation? Won't it take more time to estimate? Sure. One person's estimate may not fit for all. An estimate is a guess and when a cross-functional team guesses together, accuracy is much better. Secondly, discussion before the estimate helps us not to miss any aspect. Don't worry about the estimate time. We have a quick way to do it called planning poker. You talked about top priority 20% product backlog item. How do we really decide about priority? First, you need to tell us notional business value, say in dollars, for every deliverable according to you. This will help us compare the items. We can then estimate the efforts in story points. The ratio of about 2 will give us ROI figure, meaning ROI equals to business value divided by estimate in story points. We can then take the higher ROI items first. Next, you also need to tell us their criticalities. How do I define criticality for a product backlog item? Mark every PBI with either of the four values. Must do, that is most critical. Should do, highly desired. Could do, desired. Won't do. The meaning of won't do is, these are the items to be completed in the release only if the time and budget permits. Else, this can be moved to the next release or can be dropped. This technique is called Moscow technique. Then we add two more parameters to each PBI. Risk associated from development perspective and technical dependencies. Taking into consideration all these factors, we prioritize. So, to summarize, we are meeting to brainstorm on the list of requirements and create the product backlog. Product backlog items are estimated in story points. Product backlog items are prioritized. Your team gives a tentative release date. Are you going to start the development work immediately after that? Before we really start with the development, we will have to decide on the number of people who will be working on your project. We need to procure the material, tools, create high-level architecture. We may need to train our people on special requirements too. Sometimes we work on prototype before starting with a very complex work. All these activities are under first phase called as initiation phase or sprint zero. After that, we can start with the first iteration that is sprint one. The execution methodology is called Scrum. You being owner of the product, your role will be product owner. I will be leading the team as Scrum Master. Thank you for watching. Please leave your feedback comments. You may subscribe the channel for future updates.